electron beam lithography and molecular beam epitaxy. So this is the nano material and this is the nano technology and these are all the instruments, the equipments that are handled and these are all the process, the epitaxy and the lithography process of electron and molecular beams. So this is what we call nano technology at all. Second, uh, now we are having a lot of things, nano, 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 everything I have already told this is nano rubber, that is nano tube, <laughs> that is nano composite, that is nano knot, that is nano material, that is nano bot like robot now, that is nanobotics like robotics, now a new science is emerging, it is known as nanobotics. And uh, there is also nano food, energy based food, nano food is there. Everything you can prefix, anything with nano in 100 years. I could say this with confidence for two reasons. And number one, the emergence of nano science clearly proves so. And number two, you are not going to question me after 100 years. So for this reason, I say that you can prefix everything with nano. We can even call nano father, nano mother, nano son, everybody. So that much. See, Ati Sarvatra Varjay used to say, we used to get into both extremism. Extremism of paucity, extremism of insecure abundance. There are two things. One is downtrodden paucity. The other extremism is undistributed or unevenly distributed or adverse effect oriented or uh, uh, disorder consequential and sequential extremity in abundance. We are having two-ended uh, knives in the form of technology. So nanotechnology, you know that it is useful in various areas and I want to give you some suggestions. See, generally <coughs> the science of lecture, delivering lecture, the, that is the technology of oration I want to say, it deals with something. For example, what is that substance? What is the history of the substance? And what are the stages crossed? What is the precursion? Where it is going to end number five? And what are the hazards? And what is the role of the people available to think or do collectively, individually or with instrumental aid? This is how we used to speak. Now we just give you a small idea about the applications and more than that, we want to do something for the society in nanotechnology for which some tips are given. It is based on, first it is based on the person, you see each and everybody, you know that uh, the health is the most sweetest thing for people. People they are interested in everything and what they relish the most is Number one, health. I told in one uh, health conference that God laughed at human beings for one reason. When it was last word, simply God told, first half of your life, you are spending everything from your health for getting money. The second half, you are spending all money for restoring your health back. <laughs> so likewise, health is the very basic thing. Everybody uh, is uh, at least uh, conceptively, whether they are behaving like that or not, they deserve or not, they are desiring anti-aging, youth and dynamism, then a panacea for all of the diseases to be devoid of uh, deficits and uh, other rather deviations. <coughs> and always also a sound mind and a sharp intellect, then uh, extended longevity whether they are going to be useful for the society at least for the family or not. So these are the common desires of each and every person. So nano medicine, now see nano, you cannot just put one nano. If it is nanomedicine, nanophysics, nanochemistry is there, nanobiotechnology is there, and nanotechnology and plants are there. I have already told about the nano information technology, nano is there. So we are going to explain it very briefly. So first it is very much available for imaging. The already available structures in cell imaging as well as the diagnostic images, they were not so clear and transparent because of uh, the contrast level variation due to which uh, an invasive biopsy, you know that now there is invasive biopsy in cancer. Invasive biopsy means you must penetrate inside, you must take the tissue and then get it for a biosophical uh, reading and uh, scrutiny. <laughs> so this is unavoidable. So to avoid this uh, biopsy, invasive biopsy, if the contrast level is boosted by the nanoparticle coating, giving you the clear image of the person's uh, oncological status, cancer status, its the penetration, permeation and the other areas by which there is no need for the person's biopsy. And not only in cancer, in detection of any latent diseases, any uncompromisable, undetectable, non-cooperative, fatal diseases, the utility of nanotechnology in magnetic resonance imaging, it is very much it avoids ambiguity, obscurity and also the supplemented requirement of further biopsy or any other analytical study for ascertaining the disease. 
it is not required very clearly very candidly we can get the benefit number one number two now the world is researching upon digital drug drive so instead of going inside the body like you are having the injected material it which travels throughout the body it does not focus even though it can act upon the morbid region it directly comes to either uh, the intravenous or the arteries and other uh, carriers of the blood in the body so it takes the material and it has a travel that surgery can be avoided by means of a nano drug drive it can be used as a nano drug drive and utility of nano particles <coughs> Utility of nanoparticles, for example, now gold has been used. Nanoparticles of gold oxide is used for that. <coughs> it is very much useful for these people to reach at the morbid region itself, which avoids pain. Unwanted pain will not be there. If it is just inserted inside, it has more efficacy, it has lesser pain and complexities. And apart from that, nanoparticles, they are also substituted. For example, we used to have calyx in Ayurveda, you know that. All heavy metals are used, which are very hazardous. Even America and Canada, they have rejected most of the Ayurvedic drugs in the pretext of having heavy metals undissolved, in, uh, indigestibly, and as well as in assimilably projected heavy metals were highly present. And so they have rejected all of these things. Likewise, the nanomaterials, as there are subtler in status, first I want to explain the greatness of subtlety. Number one, if something is in a macro level, if it goes to the micro level, it gets more energy. The energy is at least one lakh times more. Subtlety enhances the capability. Subtlety enhances power of fusion and fusion. Subtlety, it gives the real color. There are two things. One is the inherent quality and second thing is the processed quality. And the processed quality is of two types. Inherent processed quality and processing processed quality. Inherent quality is also processed inherent quality and inherent inherent quality is there. For example, you are, you are processing lot of things outside. You are processing lot of things outside. But inside the earth, if your macro system is constructed to a macro system, towards a macro expansion, it undergoes lot of process not done by you, not by any artificial thing, but by the implanted engineering and productive progressive mechanism implanted engineering productive progressive mechanism IEPPM it is inbuilt with each and everything so everything that behaves differently distinctly and distinguishably in its nano status or in its subatomic status it may be nano pico or lot of other things milli or micro whatever it may be the more it reaches the quality its behavior also is distinct different and distinguishable I already told uh, let us give some examples for that Transparent things at the nanoparticle level, they are opaque and opaque things are transparent. This is between opaque and transparent, number one. And so many things which are just uh, stagnate in status, just subdued in status, they are combustible in their nano level. So many things which are inert, they behave like a catalyst. Insulators, they behave like conductors. Insulators, they behave like conductors. Solid things they behave like liquids. So I will take five examples. So opaque thing behaving like transparent. Example is copper. Copper at the nano level, it is transparent. So the behavior differs. Operation differs. energy differs. What we want is a driving force to bombard that energy to get into productivity. Number one, a storage device. There are four devices required. One is the bombardment device that releases that energy and second is a storage device and third is you see everything must be corresponding to the capability everything must have the same efficacy you must have a very powerful bombardment you must have a very powerful storage equipment number three is the application device so the device must also be powerful and number four thing very dangerous thing is the person who uses either a scientist or a scientific community or a national community either a power block of the nation or the world they must be having benevolence, good mind. If they are not having good mind benevolence, three things will happen. Number one, they will see that it is not distributed for others. Number one, they will misappropriate energy from other sources also. Number two, they will use it for destructive purposes. So four things are required for good technology, for nanotechnology especially, as it is subtle, energy is also subtle. As it is powerful, energy is also hyper turbulent. 
so the impact will also be hyperturbulent if it is protective it will be also hyperturbulent if it is destructive it will also result in a fire so apart from 